Hey gang, welcome back to the Bullfrog Pawn Shop. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your wood lathe into a variable speed disc sander and buffing machine. Let's get to it. I made this sanding disc out of an old piece of Formica countertop that I scavenged from a remodel project. And you can see I mounted a faceplate on the back of it, cut out a rough circle. After I had the rough circle cut out, I mounted it on the lathe and I trued it. On the lathe. Obviously, I'm just faking it now because I've already done this. Okay, so the table part was built with a small strip that just fits inside here. And you can see that right there. Uh, and the rest is a box. You can see I attached the tabletop with pocket screws. The rest of this box was simply screwed together. There's a hole through the middle here, uh, 5 16 a little bigger than my quarter 20 thread. thread. Uh, you'll see what that's for in a minute. This was just glued and tacked on here. As for my locking mechanism, I had a buddy of mine tack weld this quarter 20 bolt on here. This piece fits underneath here like that. This piece fits up under here. A couple washers. And here's my homemade knob. And the way this works is you slide this table up here, give yourself a hair clearance, tighten the knob. If you have access to a 3D printer, I highly recommend you download and print this little device here. It's a really slick device. I'll put the link in the description. Um, it's really nice for drawing radii. So this is an inch and a quarter radius. Pretty slick. So, check that out, nice and square. I'm running the disc sander at about 1700 RPMs. And now, how to turn your wood lathe into a variable speed buffing machine as well. Let's get to it. All right, the left-hand side of your lathe headstock is known as the outboard side. It's got a threaded arbor as well. Let's zoom in on that. Do you notice anything strange about that? Yeah, it's left-hand threads. So, here's what you need. So this is known as the inboard side. This is known as the outboard side. Inboard side has right-hand threads. The outboard side has left-hand threads. And the reason for this is so that as the machine turns, the thre anything threaded on here will tend to, to resist turning and tighten. Same thing over here, anything this way, as it spins this way, the nut or anything that's screwed on will tend to tighten. In other words, the turning of the machine will tend to tighten the whatever's threaded on there as opposed to loosening it. So the first thing I knew I would need was this coupler. And I went on McMaster car and I looked for a left-hand thread coupler. By the way, let me back up. So these threads here are one inch diameter, eight threads per inch, okay? One inch diameter measured this way, eight threads per inch measured that way. Standard thread notation. So I went on McMaster car and I looked for a left-hand thread, one inch by eight coupler, and I found this. So that is gonna screw onto there. Again, I'm turning lefty tighty. Remember, these are left-hand threads. The next thing I needed was a threaded rod, left hand, one inch by eight 
left hand threaded rod. And of course I happened to find that on the McMaster car as well. I want you to take a look at this. The end of a bolt or threaded rod is rarely ever perfectly flat. So in order for this flat surface to mate properly with the end of this, which I'm assuming is perfectly true and flat, I had to take this on my metal lathe and face it. If you don't know what that means, that means that the end that makes the end surface perfectly square to the axis of the piece. Now, if you don't have a metal lathe, I'm pretty sure you can make this work with a disc sander and a miter gauge. It may take a little bit longer. But this needs to be perfectly flat and perfectly square with this so that it mates nice and flat against this. Otherwise, this is going to wobble when it spins. The other thing I bought on McMaster car were two left hand threaded one inch by eight nuts. I made this little flange and there's another one on the other side out of a piece of plexiglass, a quarter inch plexiglass I had laying around. If I had to do this over again, I would have bought three nuts because what I didn't foresee was that remember as this thing spins, anything that's screwed onto it tends to tighten, which means it's going to go this way. Well, the nut on this side is going to go this way, which will loosen the, the little clamping of the, the buffing wheels. Luckily, I had this other somewhat of a left hand thread. It's a left hand thread, same threads, and it's used to make a face plate. I ordered a couple of these a while back to make an outboard hand wheel. And I was ordering one and I realized, figured I'll order a couple of them just in case I need them down the road. And so thankfully I had another one of these. That way I was able to jam these two nuts together. Um, and that way it doesn't creep that way as the, the thing spins. Now these nuts are really large. I did not have any wrench to fit them. So I had to make one. It's not pretty, <laughs> uh, but it works. Of course, they didn't make the coupler that fit the same size wrench, unfortunately. Uh, the coupler would take a one and three eighths wrench. The nuts are one and a half inch. But anyway, this wrench worked. By the way, um, I cut this out with a saber saw and some inexpensive metal cutting blades. I see a lot of guys online cutting everything out with their angle grinder. This is one eighth inch steel that I had some scrap laying around. I see a lot of guys cutting with those angle grinders. Man, uh, that just looks sketchy to me. Um, so I usually use my saber saw with some inexpensive metal cutting blades. I went through about three of these three blades cutting this out because they dull quickly. I did not use any coolant. I should have tried that. Um, but the blades were about a dollar a piece. So this cost me $3 and about 20 minutes to make after I cut it out, took it on my belt grinder and regular grinder and just cleaned it up. And it works like a champ, as you can see. This is the Corona Caster. Check it out, color shift paint. I have this about 800 RPMs. Very light touch on this. So that's how you convert your wood lathe into a disc sander and buffing machine. By the way, I should mention the disc sander was essentially free. Uh, all the materials I, I used were scrap. 
and the buffing components, including the wheels and all the hardware, was about $100, $120 or so. Anyway, uh, I love it when the plan comes together. So, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Bullfrog Pond Workshop.